Yeah. Um, thanks. Right. So I would start sharing my screen if it allows me to. There you go. Share. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. Can everybody see it? Yes. Yes. All right. Cool. So uh, this is about to introduce. I don't have any formal uh, presentation here. That we don't. We don't. This is fairly new, so we don't have a lot of material. Maybe. And I thought that there was another um, presentation going to happen from uh, Juliet Moft. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I would like to introduce that. Uh, and once we have more material, maybe I'll do an actual. Uh, and if there's interest, an actual presentation and prepare for it. Uh, all I I want to do now is just introduce this initiative and maybe discussions can start. And, and this is, as, as I said, is a community initiative. So we um, rely on community feedback and this is for the community. Um, so the initiative is called a Drupal 7 soft landing or Drupal 7 end of life soft landing. Uh, and we have, we have, I'll provide some links as I go along. Uh, let me just find, where is it, the chat? Yep, there you go. I'll put it in the chat. So this is the main page of the initiative, which is basically the documentation. And we have specified the initiative goals and the scope. And, and there's additional uh, pages that will be added here in the future. Uh, if you go to the scope page, just bear with me. Right, so this is broken down and we, we are hoping, because it's lengthy, we are hoping to, to break this down further and provide additional links. And the same goes for um, for the understanding your options as a Drupal 7 site owner uh, page. So, so it, they're kind of lengthy. So maybe we'll split them into sub pages uh, depending on use case. But as I said, this is fairly, fairly new. Uh, uh, who, the who, just let me go just back to the initial page. So the initiative, I take no credit. This initial work was done by uh, Irina Zax, which is, uh, I'll give you credits, is a person that is based in the US. Uh, she's the owner, founder and owner of Fibonacci Web Studio. Uh, so web developer, she's very active. She's been uh, a drop of 15 plus years. And if I am not mistaken, she recently finished uh, some role. I'm not uh, entirely sure in the Drupal Association, but she's very active. Uh, the other member that is currently a co-maintainer is uh, Tim. He's also based in the US and he runs a company called Triplo. Triplo sorry. Uh, he's been uh, active for at, uh, almost three, uh, 13 years now, very active in local Drupal camps and, and other contributions as well. And uh, same as me, uh, we are both uh, working with Backdrop CMS, which is one of the options that will be uh, suggested as an option here uh, for Drupal site, uh, Drupal 7 site owners. So I'll quickly, I'll show this, what this is all about. So this is the uh, official usage stats for Drupal core in Drupal.org. Uh, it shows the various versions of uh, Drupal core that uh, are uh, out there. Uh, the big red portion here is Drupal 7. So we have a good 400,000 websites still running on Drupal 7. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, this, this line here where it picked was where uh, Drupal 8, around when Drupal 8 was announced. Uh, and enough time was given many years uh, for uh, site owners to switch to Drupal 8, 9, or 10, but people seem to not have been doing that. And the initiative is uh, starting with the goal to help these people move on because by the unless something changes by the end of uh, this year, November 2023, uh, the project will come uh, will become end of life. So it means no more uh, bug fixes, no more uh, security updates. But this is, remains to be seen, actually. It will be officially decided in July this year. Uh, at the same time, because this is like a huge portion of the Drupal uh, community, uh, we don't want to leave these people behind. Uh, for whatever reason, they were left behind. Could have been, it could, could have been budget. Usually, it's most likely that. Uh, or uh, just the amount of work that needs to be done, basically. Um, so yes, uh, people have been mo slowly moving to uh, towards the newer versions of Drupal, but but not enough people. So this is what this is about. 
Uh, only today, just a few, maybe an hour ago, I also started a, um, a new project to match this initiative. So there is, I'll, I'll provide the link for that in the chat as well. So um, again, I've added the same people as the co-maintainers. We are yet to establish a, a, an official um, uh, time where we meet to discuss uh, the agenda. There's no issues open, uh, but what we are planning, there will be no code or uh, releases here. This will just be to provide links to the documentation, the resources, and also so that people can open issues with uh, things that they wanna suggest that maybe we have missed uh, that we haven't considered, or maybe offer um, advice or additional solutions. Um, so uh, I should mention also that uh, so there's there's multiple solutions that are being offered. So it's it's of course it's the uh, suggestion that people should move as soon as possible to Drupal nine or Drupal ten, right? But for those that for as I said, whatever reasons are not ready to move yet. Um, we would like to uh, suggest that they move to Backdrop CMS, which is, for those that are not aware, a Drupal 7 fork, a continuation of Drupal 7. And this will, uh, not a lot of information will be here because we are not trying to, you know, uh, shamelessly pitch Backdrop to here. There will be some links and some pro, pro and cons listed, but very high level. We don't want to make this about Backdrop CMS. Although I say I'm a, I'm a bit biased because I belong in the project management committee of that project. Uh, the goal here is to help site owners uh, understand what their options are, the various options, and, and you know, uh, help them move from their own. Uh, maybe it would be tools that allow them to do a site audit on their site and understand the size and the complexity. Maybe it will be um, uh, providing links or improving the existing um, channels that we have so that site owners can find uh, a right partner, a dev partner to help them in that process, whatever they decide to go with. So, so yep, this is in general, the, the goal of the initiative. Uh, and yes, I would like to, to, to ask everyone to participate uh, and maybe in another follow-up meeting, uh, I will have more of an official presentation with uh, more resources, more actual structured uh, information that I can provide. And with that, I would like to maybe open the floor for questions. Okay. Um, question. Yes. So module development and uh, contrib that's come from Drupal 7, does that work like one for one in backdrop? Does it? Uh, yes. So, so it's easier to port modules to Drupal 7, uh, if they're just very simplistic modules, there's a Drupal 7 compatibility layer. So all your Drupal underscore functions will still keep, it's on by default, they will still work. There's very uh, few uh, compatibility, backwards compatibility breaking changes. So chances are that if your module is very simple, you just change a single line in the .info file and it just works. Now there's more elaborate uh, projects like, uh, for example, the group um, uh, module comes to mind uh, or rules that needed some more, uh, some additional uh, work. Uh, but yes, if it's not uh, like this, I don't know, like a thousand of the most popular modules already have been ported because Backdrop has been around for a long time. Uh, uh, maybe the questions that you're asking is like uh, recently in the past year, after multiple extensions of the end of life, we had uh, some uh, serious organizations move huge projects and save huge amount of money for, for the customers. So it was an appealing solution. Uh, so, so we kind of have more people coming in and these organizations have the resources to port even more modules. So if there was, if we had 98% of the modules that they needed ported, and they needed to get these organizations across, they ported them and contributed them. And as like figures that come off the top of my head, maybe it's not accurate, I will provide links to those. It's like Aten, which is again an agency in the US have moved two of the of very complex um, websites uh, in the family of um, uh, Stanford University. And if I recall the, the, the numbers correctly, that like they finished, the move, the upgrade to backdrop like in three months 
and they the initial sort of like estimate to move them to Drupal eight or nine was around the one million mark, and then they ended up only using like four hundred thousand out of that. Like so, they 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 saved the customer like 50, 60 percent of the the budget. So we're we're talking about huge savings there. Uh, and at the same time, they moved them to a solution which. Uh, it, there may, there is discussions in the community that that until the usage of Drupal seven drops to a very serious like uh, to, to a very uh, small amount, uh, it will it may be perpetuating the support like at least security updates. Again, not official. Um, and there are some people that uh, want their site to the Drupal seven site to run forever as it is. So that will be a good option for them. Right, but there's there's people that want a security supported version of the software that they're running, and at the same time they want, as as you know, uh, things evolve. They want to add new features to the site uh, at the same time. So in that case, Backdrop CMS is a good solution for them. Uh, yeah, and I can talk more about Backdrop CMS, but that was not the goal of the presentation. But yeah, sure, <laughs> ask away any questions. Don't don't let that discourage you. Um, yep. Yeah. Any any other questions? I guess like I have a follow up. Um, yes, sure. So, do you do you feel that having this initiative on Drupal contributes to the fragmentation of the Drupal community overall? Instead of getting people to go from seven to eight and yes, focus sir. on Drupal, it's sort of like giving them. I will give a, a short clear path answer. away from it. Yes, yeah. sure. I will give a short answer. The answer is no, I don't believe that there's any fragmentation. And then I will give a more elaborate answer. So when Backdrop CMS was announced, it was how it started. It was silly. So the, the people that founded, that started the project were long-term, you know, Drupal, uh, the, the names that you usually see, the usual suspects, as I say, chronic Drupal users, right? So they started the fork as, as, as a joke, like, you know, when they saw the, the eight move, happen and the changes and what it would mean for their business, the business that they were running. And initially we started like a joke, like, like they said, ah, we can always fork, right? So one of them actually did start and fork the the the, the project, the D7 project, and, and uh, just to see what, what amount of work would be required and what it would look like. Uh, but because he was a renowned person among the community, it didn't go unnoticed. And initially there was some concern like you expressed now, but um, we have been around for like 10 years now and it, it was a bit like we wouldn't we never aimed to be uh hostile we we meant to be a solution for like the initiative states that maybe that's a good thing i'm trying to find a link where it's there's a there's a presentation that says that yes so so the initiative Sprung off the a, a presentation that Dean, one of the maintainers of the initiative currently uh, has done, uh, which has a graphic that I would like to present, and this will come as a as an additional sort of like answer to you. I'll, I'll make this a little bit larger. So um, this is the graph that I showed you earlier, and this is the graph that was in an, an original post back like ten years ago when when Backdrop CMS was announced, and this was the goal. So we started noticing as a rough outline of this, that uh, D7 was, and predicted at the same time, that it would decrease. And also the way that things are going, because uh, the Symfony-based versions of Drupal were hard, like people needed to be uh, familiar with uh, Composer and Symfony. It was a whole different thing. Whatever reasons, we predicted that this decline, it, it already had started, right? And this is the solution that we recommended, that we said that we are a friendly product. Uh, and I'll specify what I mean, a Freddy product. And we would like to, to capture people that would otherwise flee to other platforms and other software and continue the upwards trend that Drupal had since the days of B7, which I personally consider the most successful versions of Drupal, right? So uh, recently Dries has uh, publicly, like I think it was an interview that he's done uh, during one of the Drupal cons announced that they they consider backdrop CMS now as part of the family, and that we've we've um, improved things for the community. Uh, and I'll, I'll 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 explain what I mean when I say that we are a friendly product. So if you're from a digital agency perspective, right, your developers don't have to learn anything new. If they worked with Drupal seven before, it will be 
at, like at home, like they won't have maybe a few um, uh, new things that they will have to learn. For example, in Backdrop CMS, we backported or we implemented our own solution of uh, content management, CMI, things that have, were added in D8. So you will get some of the benefits of Drupal 8 and beyond, plus the good, you know, old fashioned whatever used to be Drupal 7. So your developers will not have to retrain. From a site owner perspective, your content editors, because the UI and the concepts and the structural content entry has not changed, you will not have to retrain, completely retrain your content editor team, right? Uh, and, and as I said, the, the cost is less. Now, trying to keep these people within the Drupal community is useful for the product, for the project itself, for, for the software, right? Because people that are not ready to move to D7 now may be in a few years, right? And, and moving from backdrop to Drupal 11, I don't know, whatever that is, would be as easy as moving from Drupal 7 and in some aspects, maybe easier. Right. So the goal in general is to A, do not uh, make it seem that we are forgetful and, and leaving the Drupal 7 site owners to their own lack, right? Destiny. Uh, so we want to show them that as a community, we care for them. And we uh, realize and we understand that this, this uh, transition to newer versions of Drupal has been problematic for one reason or the other. We want to respect that and help them. Maybe that means that a Drupal solution or a backdrop solution is not best for them. And then maybe they will have to move to something entirely different. That's totally fine. We want to help them with that rather than leave them lingering in a, a potentially unsecure in the future, not supported software. But out of those hundreds of thousands of site owners that are considering a solution, if they stay or if they move to backdrop, there's more chances that in the future we'll still keep them and they will move to a future version of Drupal. So we keep them within the family. That's that's the whole goal. So yes, I hope I answered your question there with that. Um, extremely thoroughly. Thank you. Yes. Um, anyone else? Um, I had a question, Greg. Sure. So with this initiative, um, the Drupal Enterprise Soft Planning Initiative, what is the main? I, I know you showed us the uh, main the main page on Drupal or org etc but what is the main objective of this initiative uh, is it about just discussions or is it about um showing the like what are the different options yes all of that is raising awareness one of the things that is a big big pet peeve of mine is that Drupal 7 has been supported for many years now but unless it's uh sessions on trying to, I will, I will use the word forcefully, and, and please excuse for lack of better words, to forcefully move people out of Drupal 7 and into D9, regardless of whatever problems they are uh, facing. Uh, we have not had any Drupal specific sessions in any of the big events in Drupal. And this is, this is not fair to the community that was still using a, uh, I understand that the new thing is the more shiny thing and everybody moves to that, right? But we had signs for many years that people, for whatever reason, as I said, were lingering in Drupal 7, and we have not been doing that much. So one of the goals, the main goal is to just help Drupal 7 site owners find a solution moving forward, right? But subtasks of that goal or manifestations of, you know, the, 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 the efforts that we will uh, make to, to, to provide the soft landing is uh, provide tools provide um, specific events or sessions within greater Drupal events if, if there's a need for it and provide a means for these people that may be considered that, that the rest of the community has moved on and left them behind, that that is not the case, that we are still supportive and we are here for them, right? Did that answer your question or? Um, yeah, I did, uh, I did. Um, and uh, I understand that this is a very recently started initiative. Yes. And um, so what is what are the next steps like? Um, the, there yes. are three maintainers or three people who are who have started the initiative. So what are the next steps? So we we are seeking to to establish maybe a weekly or fortnightly uh meeting, maybe over Zoom or something like that, where people can join us. Uh we need to break down the resources like 
there's tools like Drupal modules that help you that maybe they need, um, like they have a lot of bugs or issues in their queues and they will need to, to move them forward. Like the uh, upgrade status module comes to mind, right? To help people with moving to Drupal 9 uh, and 10. So things like that, we will we will plan to to uh, solicit help so that we can um, drive focus towards these tools that make it easier for people in Drupal 7 to move to a, a, a platform, provide documentation. Uh, and, and once we've established a meeting, maybe we'll outline actionable points. Now, having said that, as you said, we're only three people and we can only think as much as three people. Yeah. This is why I today opened the respective Drupal.org issue queue so that we can have the community come there and say, hey, I went through your documentation guide and I see that you outlined these three solutions, but hey, there's this additional solution. Maybe you should suggest that. Now, I understand that we are not, by saying listing solutions, we're not going to specifically list all available CMSs out there, right? Uh, the only endorsed uh, product that will be mentioned by name uh, with the blessings of Drupal Association and, and uh, other people that we have told in, uh, talked in, to in um, Drupal will be Backdrop CMS. And again, there will be no dedicated page for that there as, uh, you know, outlining all the features that Backdrop has. No, it will be maybe just a list, a short uh, high level list of pros and cons of why you should move to that and then links to the project and then maybe events or other resources. Uh, the other CMSs and solutions will be provided as sort of like a vague, uh, you know, third party solution that you maybe need to move to. Like yeah. for example, people, it may be suited for some sites that like they haven't become ambitious, what we call, or uh, the structural, the structured way uh, of um, uh, content entry that happens in Drupal maybe is not, what should have been planned for that site to begin with? And maybe WordPress is a better solution for them More Wix or Squarespace still, right? We want to provide that as a sort of like as an optional solution. And maybe, as I said, as as chronic Drupal people, we always try to um, tailor every project that we have around Drupal, but maybe that's not ideal, right? We need to uh, have other things to consider other things as well, yeah. I want to conclude now. I, I do understand what you are saying, but how will this initiative as a community initiative guide people towards something like this? Because this these things become very project specific. So are you expecting as part of the initiative that people will come to you and say, hey, we, are, we have this current project and no. Yes. So you will see, just bear with me. So planning. So if you go to the main page already, you will see, uh, if I recall correctly, is the understanding your options. It's This is sort of like now currently in its current form is that it's sort of like a question and answer thing. So does your site work as it's supposed to? Then this is what you would need to do. So there's a lot of to do here. So still, as I said, this is, this is draft, initial drafts to get the initiative going, but it would be, see, what if you're not ready to upgrade? What are your options? So it would be, trying to to help people understand the current status of their site what their needs are and what would be the appropriate solution for them moving forward since d7 will not be a very long term solution for them right so this will be the the part this is how it will work right uh so of course the main drive would be go to a newer supported supported version of of drupal which would be the d9 d10 and continuation of it or if you're not ready to upgrade for whatever reason, we accept that. Here are the alternatives, and backdrop is one of them. So, yes. Okay. All right. Um, thanks for that explanation. Um, if others have any questions, because I I do have one more, not a question, but a suggestion or way forward. But if any others have any more questions, please go ahead because I don't want to hold in the limelight. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Anyone else? All right, cool. So shoot away. What's the next suggestion or question? Not, I mean, basically, again, as next steps, have you gone ahead and created a, um, for example, a discussion channel on Slack, the Drupal Slack yet, or what are the, because you need to, uh, I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I have my community head hat on now. So though you have to make this 
popular among people. You may you need to um, make sure that people know about this initiative. So what are you doing and going to do? Yes. About so I have to admit that um, sort of like my passion is backdrop CMS. So I linger around that community. And uh, it's the same thing with Tim. But Irina recently started, like she's been hovering around the community and asking questions for like a year or maybe more. But recently she's, uh, she has been more active in our community. And was, she's the main drive that organized, she started this initiative from the Drupal perspective. So one of the tasks that we had, one of the few, few tasks that we had this past week was um, add myself and Tim as co-maintainers. This has been done. Create a project in Vue.org so that people can start uh, raising issues and also that we ha have a, a starting point that, that to, to, to link people to resources. And then the next thing would be for people that are already have access and can create channels in Drupal Slack to start a dedicated channel for this project as well or other resources. And also, as I said, to establish a, a meeting that is fairly regular so that we can... Uh, it will be sort of, we haven't figured out what format it would have, but I'm imagining that would be discussion of agenda of items that we need, like documentation that we need to work on, comms that need to go out or what have you. And also maybe a sprinting where we actually um, do those things in that half an hour or one hour that the meeting is gonna uh, be like. But yes, if, for example, if you want to help, if you go to the project here and and start an issue that says, create a Slack channel for this, right? This will be one of the tasks that we need to do. Someone needs to do it. It's so many things we haven't organized um, uh, properly again. So, so yeah. All right. All right. Thanks a lot for this. I'll be stopping the recording now. Yes. And I'm